So, have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've got a 3D track that sort of works, but not all the way? Say you have the first part of it tracked and you have the last part of it, but somewhere in the middle, it doesn't quite work. How do you combine those two scenes together? Well, let's take a look at that today. Let's say that you've got a piece of footage here and the beginning part of the track is working, but then it sort of slips and loses it, but you can get the last part and you want to combine those two successful tracks into one overall track. How would you do that? So let's pop open Cinema 4D here. And uh, first thing we got to do is bring in our footage. So we want to do some 3D tracking on this thing, assuming that my footage is prepared. So one thing that might trick you up with some footage that you've shot is that uh, the frame rate needs to be whole frame. Cinema 4D doesn't do like 23.976 or 2997. It only does 24 or 30. So you're going to want to convert your footage into a solid frame rate. So in this case, I shot with GoPro, so I'm at 60 frames per second uh, solid. So I'm just going to go with that. I didn't have to do anything to my footage first. So got my motion tracker open here. And uh, let's go take that footage and import it. Here it is, and I can kind of scrub through and see that we got our shot. Now, one thing Cinema 4D does when you bring it in is it actually resamples it and makes it a, uh, a lower resolution image, so it's faster to work with. But sometimes you want to keep some of that detail because the tracker is going to have a better time picking up on stuff. In fact, in this case, let's just crank it up all the way to 100% and see what it does. So we're going to go to 2D track here, and I'm on frame zero, and I'm creating an auto track which is going to find a bunch of different points that it thinks are going to be good candidates for tracking. And then basically I'll just hit auto track and it's going to go through process. Okay. Oh, it's finished. <laughs> this thing is so small. It really, everything down here, I think should be in the middle of the screen, nice and big so that, cause people will walk in on you and well, not anymore. Cause I work from home now, but before, when I was in an office, people would walk in and I'd just be like sitting, watching my computer screen, and it looks like I'm just thinking about whatever I'm doing, when in fact I'm waiting for a RAM preview from Cinema, or which is called a preview, <laughs> or some other calculation to calculate. I'm not just doing nothing. All right, so anyway, um, let's play through this and see what we got. So you can see it's picked up on those tracking points. Some of them didn't make, didn't make the cut, it's following through and they only go to right there. And okay, so now we have the last part of the footage has nothing on it. So let's try again. Let's create some more auto tracks. And in this case, I'm actually just going to hit the backwards button. So it's just going to go from the front or from the end of the clip backwards. And it's processing. Now, with any luck, you can probably keep doing this and adding points until you get a solid track. It's always better, obviously, to have one camera track that works than to have to combine two together, but you can do it. You can hack it. I don't know. There's probably better ways to do what I'm doing. In fact, I guarantee there's better ways to do what I'm doing. I should have looked up a tutorial or done something more official instead of just answering it this way. But this is how I would approach this problem. And we're going to go ahead and create a 3D solve. But let's see. So now you can see I have some points that are actually solid in my scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's just go. Let's just go to a different camera. That's not that one. There we go. Okay, so now we can sort of see what's happening with these points. So it thinks obviously these points. You can see like that's the corner of the Rubik's cube. There's the other corner. And if we pop out here, we can get a little bit of a sense. Where's those other corners? I thought I had them selected. Hold on, one, two, this one back here, and this one down here. And if you want, since those are a little hard to see, wait, is it uns why is it unselecting the other ones? Hold up, hold up. Oh, it's because I'm not in object mode. All right. Now I can select all these things. And so, and I think this isn't quite on the corner, but it's close enough that I can see how I have these. If you just drag them all to the top, then you can sort of put them all together. Just cause, and if you want to, you can even change them to something else, like a diamond, 
just so you can distinguish them from the other ones or you can change their color. And now we can start to see where that Rubik's Cube is going to be in 3D. And you can also sort of tell that the actual like horizon line and the axis is just it's just way off. It's wherever. So what we're going to do once we get this camera move all set the way that we want is we're going to end up like reorienting the scene around the points that we know where they are. If that makes sense, like, let's just take a look at that right now. So we've got a, a cube. If I change my shading mode here. So here's a cube. We know that the Rubik's cube is a cube. So that's a good place to start. So uh, I work in feet because I'm an American and I'm dumb and centimeters don't make immediate sense to me. So I do everything in feet. So let's actually find out exactly how big a Rubik's cube is. 2.2 inches. There you go. And that's the answer. 0.18. All right. So it took me a little while to arrive at this. I work in feet because I'm an American and I'm dumb and centimeters don't make sense to me. Even though Rubik's cubes are measured in centimeters, they're 0.18 feet across, which is 2.2 inches. Don't ask me why I did it like this. Anyway, if I pop into my camera here, I can see that I'm inside the Rubik's cube. So that doesn't work. So basically what I'm talking about doing here is, uh, well, first of all, let's save the scene. I, I should have done this a while ago. So go in here to my funsies projects. This is going to be bad track part one. Yeah. All right. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and save the part two just so everything's sort of intact and I haven't messed with it. Right. Okay, close that, open up part one again. Here we go. All right, so part one's open. We've got this track, we've got our solved camera. Um, I'm probably gonna wanna put the background object in here because if I don't do that, it's gonna be hard for me to see what I'm doing. So create a background object. And then basically I can pop out of here. Let's just get rid of the cube for now. So what I'm going to do is just create a null object. If you hold shift, then it'll put it under the object you have selected. And this is going to be my track part one. And I'm going to put the solved camera and the features and everything inside of that track camera. Now I could have kept it inside of here, but this just pulls everything out of my motion camera setup and into cinema directly. So I still have that background object so I can see what I'm working on, but you can see the issue right away is that my camera track is working pretty well until we get to here and then it just sorta gives up. So that's bad, right around 240 it gives up. So let's see, I wanna take this corner, this corner, this corner, and that one, which isn't actually on the corner, it's, it's like two thirds of the way through the cube so remember that. Um, but I'm going to take these guys and I'm going to turn them into diamonds so that I can see them a little bit easier and pop out into, I'm just, I just went into a, whoops, into a different perspective mode that wasn't inside the camera. And you can kind of see where the Rubik's cube is starting to show up. So I'm going to take that cube that I made earlier that's sitting at zero, zero, zero. And I am going to try to fit the cube. This is going to take a little bit of finagle in here. I'm going to try to fit the cube around uh, with those corners, right where those corners are. And again, I know this is not the proper way to do this stuff, but sometimes this will work. Okay. And so you can see it's way too big. So this is where the part about having this inside a null comes in. Um, so I actually want to change the scale and that null that I created is going to be right, uh, right where the camera is. And I actually want the null to be right around here. So I'm actually going to double null this thing. So I'm going to create another null object and that creates it at the origin. But if you hit this PSR button, which you don't have, <laughs> or you just hit zero, 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 zero. Uh, it'll pull it right to the center of that cube. 
right? And now I can take this whole shebang and this is actually now my master track. So this is going to be like the root for track one. Probably don't need this track right here, but it keeps everything centered. So if you if you don't have, yeah, actually. So the reason I have this in two different nulls, this null is basically centering the camera track. Remember that camera track had animation on it. So if I was to move that, then it's going to move to whatever it thinks the root, you know, to basically it's going to center where the, the where this null is, if that makes any sense. So this is basically like a pre-comp. And then we're throwing that inside of this other null, which is conveniently centered around the thing that we're trying to move our scene around. Right. So rather than trying to like finagle my camera somewhere, I'm using some common points over here to get a grasp on how this scene should be oriented. And it will make more sense in a second. Um, but now we can take this scene and this is our, our our tracks here and we actually need to scale it down. So let's try like 0.3 at first. And uh, I can kind of see that we're getting pretty close. We got actually pretty lucky on that one. That was pretty close. Now, now my track points are not 100% on there. So I might need to twist it this way a little more. This way, and I'm going to scale up a teensy bit. Here we go. can see that one down there that's actually pretty good because remember this one's two-thirds of the way if I tilt this whole rig in just a teensy bit uh, no that was actually that was I think that might have been good the way it was yeah pretty close I'm not going for perfection here you can't be there's there's what better ways to do this more precisely but this will get us so at least like the perspective is pretty dang good now and um, if we scrub through Maybe I need to adjust this just a little bit more like, yeah, like that. OK, so now if I scrub through, I can see that that's sticking pretty darn good up to that point. And if I go under this cube and create a plane object, and again, I'll use my little PSR to center everything, let's just see if this lines up so it's still a little off but not bad so I'll take my whole scene and again I'm rotating like the track around the scene I already have built okay perfect and this lip was actually a little bit wider so I think that's actually pretty good pretty good yeah that'll do sorry if this was Andrew Kramer good it just happened to work out this time I knew what I was filming for <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, that's track part one. Boom. Let's save that. And uh, let's go open up track part two. Why are you not working now? OK, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what happened. Sometimes I just start fresh. So let's just go ahead and start fresh again. All right. Motion tracker. Find that footage. Bring that footage in. There it is. Shaboom. Go to the end. Oh, yeah. We wanted to make this 100 percent. So it gets all the detail. Every detail is what we want. Um, 2D tracking. I'm going to create those auto tracks. There it goes. I don't know why it didn't work last time. Somebody can tell me. And then I'm going to go backwards from there. Have it go ahead and track. You know, I had some pizza for lunch and I have one slice left. I'm going to go get it. OK, it's done. OK, so again, my track totally works right there. That, that part's good. And then doesn't work back through here. Let's run a 3D solve. OK, so first I'm going to create a background object. I put everything in the null, which I'm going to call track part two. I'm going to pop it out. All right, here we go. So one thing that might make it easier is for me to kind of find so if I, if I was able to measure and find out exactly how much distance there was between that other point that I had and this point that would be great that's that's really what you need to do but I'll just eyeball it here 
and we'll make it work. So I centered this whole thing around this Rubik's cube, but also had this windowsill. And at least I know the windowsill is straight and is going to continue on. So that'll be my one common point here. So let me just actually stretch this over. I might need to move it a little bit further, but I think that should do. And um, I'll go ahead and copy this, which has everything else underneath it. I'll, I'll take that out in a minute. So basically go back here and we're going to save this as bad track part two v2 because v1 didn't work for me oh no so i've taken the cube from the previous scene and brought it into this scene and then deleted the track information underneath it although tell you what let's leave that there just turn it off let's try and see if we can make these work Okay, so if I go back into my footage view, I can see that this little point right here is on the ground. So that's useful. Oh, again, I got to go to object mode. Okay, so that's on the ground. And it looks like this one's close enough. Whoop. Uh, this one, not you two. Not you, non bread. Okay, and then that point's not quite on the ground, but it's close enough for me to get my bearings. So just like before, I'm kind of going to drag these up top and then change them. Let's do a star so I can see where they are. Okay. Now I can kind of see where my stars are. And I can also see, so Cinema 4D has put this track in a completely different place at a completely different scale and how do we fix that and put these two scenes together so okay so just like before i've got my bearings here maybe i'll drag this out i'm pretty sure the window still sill is going to stay straight and we tried our best on that other track to get it straight so we kind of got to do the same thing we did in the other scene where we have a common point um, but in this case, it's going to be a little bit tougher because I basically want these points right here boom, 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 to be appropriately far away from the Rubik's Cube, which is actually pretty dang far. So if we kind of look and just measure with our eyes, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six seven so we've got like seven rubik's cubes in here and this is about split in the middle so basically two rubik's cubes should fit between these two um so just to do my real crude measuring here let's make another copy of this cube i'll just delete the plane that was attached to it and all the other stuff and uh let's let's just drag this out here so one Two. Oh crap, I forgot if I counted. <laughs> I forgot how I counted it. <laughs> did I count it like like one, two? I think I did. I'm pretty sure I did. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And so that should be our first tracking point right there. Right? No, seven. Hold on. Let me do this again. Never hurts to measure twice. Cut once. So we've got one, two to the thing right there, and then three, four to that thing, and then five to that point. That seems about right. And then six, seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's what we had. So we got one, two, three, four, five. With the tracking point will be right there at the end of five, and then six, seven. The other two points will be right there. So that is basically the plan. So I know I'm popping around a lot, but. So everything's out of whack, but that's our original Rubik's Cube. This is where we need to put the end of our tracking up here. So let's just pop all this into our original cube just so it's in one place. And I'm going to take this track part two, which again is kind of centered around the first spot where we see it. that's how that's how it works. So it's centered. Around, and there's actually a little bump in there that I do not like. I don't like that bump. So I'm actually going to get rid of those first two keyframes. Bump. 
gone. Okay, so now we have it like that. That matches up with the end of the track, and then we have our other one at the beginning. So we have our track with the null in completely wrong spot. I need to put the null in the center right here, and I want that to end up in the center of my two cubes right here. Okay, so if I take all of these, and I actually should have done this with the other one, and then group them, it's going to create one null right in the middle of those that I can then create a copy of, center it up, and then use that. Yeah, use that to move my scene around. So I'll take this. And I want to get it to line up with the cube. So let's start moving things around here. So I'm dropping the null that I just created in the center of these three tracking points here. And I've dropped it into the scene cube. That was my original Rubik's cube. Does that make sense? Does that make sense what I've done here? Uh, and then I'll center. <laughs> so let's see what we got. All right. So this is definitely not not quite right, but we're getting there. So now I'm going to kind of finagle this scene a little bit. Oops, too far. Yeah, so those should be somewhat parallel with each other, and then this should be parallel with the board. And honestly, if it gets a little weird at this point and you want to like say you, this is a rough adjustment, I can do the exact same thing I just did where I create another null object in the center here to where my goal is going to be and then just parent everything again. I mean, why not? Um, that will make it easier to get where I need to get. Don't just use the scale tool. That's messy, okay? You got to do it here, which is annoying, but that's more official. <laughs> also made my scene very strange to look at. Uh, this is actually distracting, so I'm only going to have my auto tracks turned on, and I'll make them smaller so that I can see what I'm doing. All right, so let's go in here and just Okay, this is this is pretty dang close. Come on, work. Work it, baby. So in this case, I'm actually finding that eyeballing it is working better than trying to do it by the numbers because my stuff wasn't exactly on the ground. So, but that seems, that seems to be pretty close. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. I think that'll work. It at least... Yeah, it holds up. So let's kind of take a look from the outside and see what we've got here. So I've got a scene, and I know this doesn't 100% line up, but for my purposes, getting those corners to match was good enough. So that's track part two right there. And let's actually look at root for track one. Hush, dog, hush. Yeah, so let's look at let's do the same thing because this one got a little crazy too. So we'll go in here and these auto track points on the Rubik's Cube. I will group those and turn them on. Oops, when everything else is turned off. So there we go. And let's also take a look at this solved camera. There we go. 
So our cameras are definitely like different scales, but they at least somewhat match. So let's take a look at this camera move from the outside here. So we have part one, then we have a whole lot of nothing. And then we have part two start right there. So <laughs> I do wish part one was longer. Bridge some of that gap just a little bit more. Um, but let's take a look at the footage here. So that's where it's getting real. So we're just whipping, 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 steady speed all the way to the second camera, which starts right there. So we have got to, we've got to fill that space between these two. All right. All right. So we have two solved cameras and let's just put a two on that again i just don't want to get confused here and what we want to do is create a camera morph but unfortunately you can't just create one because cinema doesn't trust you to put in the pieces so you have to select the cameras that you want to be part of it then you can go in and create a camera morph so this camera morph is based off of these two cameras and it looks like i've done it exactly backwards so i'm just going to go and slam in the correct ones why you can't just make your object and then put the stuff in it's crazy anyway so you can see that now i have a new camera that is gigantic oh my goodness is so big it doesn't really matter how big it is as long as the field of view is correct speaking of which let's look at this field of view does this change i think it stays the same 15.73 this one says that it's wider than that I think the morph, pretty sure the morph changes the focal length of the camera too. Yeah, awesome. So I don't even have to worry about that. That's great. Okay, so let's basically, now we're looking through the morph camera, looking through the morph camera's eyes, which right now is set to solved camera one. And let's find the point where it sort of drops which is about right and uh, not about it's right there that's where that's where it drops so we'll put a keyframe dog i'm doing a tutorial okay so in the blend i'm putting a keyframe and i want to go all the way through to where my camera two solves begins 292 and i'll go back to my morph camera and i want the blend to be 100 percent done at that point and now it's just a matter of blending between these two so that they look nice here's our blend curve which is just linear right now but i want to go in and basically put some keyframes in here so i can match this camera move just a teensy bit better and i'm, I'm always using my rubik's cube as a guide to keep me on track and it looks like i need to smooth this out a little bit Yeah, and honestly, it looks like we do have some slippage. It looks like I mismeasured, and it could actually stand to be one Rubik's Cube longer. So that's okay. Everything is actually real time and, uh, and linked together. So if I want to do that, essentially, I don't need all these. Yeah, I'm going to move this one more cube length worth. And so I'm basically just going to take my entire part two rig... And since I got it all weird and funky in the way that it's oriented, I am just going to go ahead and create one more um, null object that's perfectly centered, and I can bring it right on over here, right, right here. It doesn't really matter where. As long as I don't have any animation on these nulls, once you start putting animation, it gets weird. Um, but yeah, basically pop that in there, and then I can bring this whole thing over. One more. Hold on. It was actually not quite on. It was a little bit past, so maybe like right there. And now I should be able to see in my morph camera, I might have to adjust these first couple keyframes. Yes, I definitely will. Um, but hopefully when the whole thing is done, I'll actually uh, have traveled a much more appropriate amount or a more appropriate amount. So just like before, I'm going to kind of adjust these first couple keyframes here. 
to put this thing in the right spot. Yep, this is looking much better. Oh yeah, smoothly blending into that final position. And it looks like we, do we have a pop? Yeah. So it's still a little wonky right there. Let's see if we don't. There we go. Now let's just see how that feels. I'll save my work. Oh no, I meant to save this as a brand new thing. This is Bad Track Part 2 V2. It's actually the whole thing. Let's save this as Bad Track Combined. And I'm going to do a preview um, to see if it's looking okay. So let's just check it out. I have to preview before I preview and then preview again. Look at this a little bigger here. All right, check it out. So now we have first track. Zoom, 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 blends into the second track. And hey, I mean, yeah, no, it's it's definitely not perfect. Look, there's a little bounce. There's a little bounce in there. So like if, you, if, if accuracy is what you need, you, you, you should try and track it all the way through. Uh, get a different piece of software like Synthize or PF Track or something that's going to do a more solid job than Cinema can do. I mean, Cinema's great, but, you know. Anyway, so this will get you almost all of the way there. So I hope that was helpful. I know this won't work in every scenario, um, but for those longer tracks and stuff where stuff slips and, you know, you just want to have two different sets of sims, this is one way that you can combine those camera animations together. So 